Good afternoon. Thanks for tuning in to Dear Cyber Sue. Today's topic is the importance of having alone time in a relationship. Now, this is something that needs to be discussed, discussed very early on when you're just starting out in a new relationship. Because what happens if you don't set a precedence early on about having your space and having your time with hobbies, friends, whatever it is that you do outside of a relationship, once you bring this in later, it's kind of too late because some people become very attached to seeing each other all the time. And if you change up the format of that because you're seeing each other constantly in the beginning, and then all of a sudden you're asking for space, this can cause a lot of problems. So you want to always be pulled back a little bit in the very early stages of a relationship. And I don't mean playing games, I don't mean, you know, just trying to be in, in, indifferent or all those kind of things. You want to be able to be true to yourself and what's important to you. If you go into a relationship and you're seeing each other 24-7 right from the start because it's so damn exciting, you're, you're kind of shortchanging yourself for the reality of what a relationship should be. And so what happens is you come in there, you're seeing each other all the time, it's so exciting, it's fun, and then three months, two months goes by and you're sitting there saying, I've given up a lot of myself. For this relationship and then the resentment can come into play so if you always take the time to give to yourself as well as to your partner and have some boundaries like okay Monday and Monday and Thursday I'm going out to do something of my sport or with a friend and then you have set plans and dates for other nights you don't assume that 24 7 you're going to be with your partner and unfortunately, this is why a lot of relationships fizzle very early on because we put so much expectation on those euphoric pheromones in the very beginning and we don't look at the relationship as how it really should be playing out. In the long term of a relationship, you can't be with each other constantly because you're going to rip each other's hair out eventually because you're spending too much time. You want to be able to miss your partner. You want to be able to come back together when you've had time apart and be able to talk about the fun things you did. And maybe they will come to an event or share something with you at a later date, but it's yours and yours alone. And this is I can't, I can't even express how important it is to have separate interests from your partner, but not so many that you're not seeing each other on a regular basis, because that's just as much of a problem as seeing each other constantly. One of the reasons that you want to do this as well in the beginning is because you don't want to cause any relationship insecurities. Because if you're seeing each other all the time and then all of a sudden you stop and you're now, you know, oh, okay the fun part's over but I want to get back to doing my things as well it can really change up the dynamics of what you just did for two months with that person so if you bring all these things in at the at the very beginning there's no disappointment you're you're both understanding that you're going to have time apart and this is so so good to do because it makes you so excited when you do get back together again when you see each other again because then you appreciate each other so much more. You're not nitpicking at little things that you're seeing constantly because you're always together. You have time to appreciate who they are as a person and you're not, you know, stepping on each other's toes all the time within your environment of your home or whatever, wherever you, you're spending time together. In my own experiences dating in the past, I found that I fell into the trap of wanting to see them all the time because it was so good. Why wouldn't you want to see them? But when you get stuck in this, this place all the time, you're always on a high. And then when one little thing happens or changes up what's been going on that's so great, it actually tumbles everything down very quickly because all you've known is excitement and fun and all that. And so when something everyday life comes into play. You have to go away for a few days. And then all of a sudden, as I brought up earlier, the insecurities come into place. And this is why when you start dating with somebody, you want to maintain the way you live your life 
as long as you're sharing it with them too on a good level you want to maintain everything that you do don't give up everything for somebody else i've often said this that when you meet a partner you want to be an extent you want them to be an extension of who you already are so if that's the case then they're bringing more into your life and you're bringing more into their life but you're still taking time to live your own life you don't ever want to get into a position where you're dependent on somebody and all of a sudden you say to yourself what happened where did i go where's that part of me that used to do this used to do that now i'm doing everything with or for my partner and it's very easy to fall into this trap when you're close it's really easy to and even if you're a strong determined woman or man it doesn't mean that you're not going to you know fall for somebody hard and give up a part of who you are but the trick is to a really good relationship and keeping the longevity alive in a relationship is to always hold on to who you are. That's what they fell in love with and that's what you fell in love with. So bring more excitement into your relationship by holding on to those really good parts of yourself that made you who you are. Don't lose that for somebody else. Thank you so much for listening to Dear Cyber Sue today. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so and click like on the video and leave any comments or show topics you have in the comment section below. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye-bye.